What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm gonna to show you everything you need to know about SYNC 3 inside of the 2021 Ford Transit. Now this is the larger upgraded screen, which is going to give us the ability to have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It's a great system. We're gonna dive into it, have a little bit of fun. Let's go for it. Now this is the SYNC 3 screen, the larger screen, and this is the reason why I absolutely recommend getting this larger screen. I'm going to throw the vehicle into reverse for a second. I want, to, I want you to watch something. Look at that. The backup camera is going to show up there. Now when you look at just the regular screen that comes inside of this thing, it's four inches. You can literally barely make it out. Like it's actually kind of laughable. So I really, I, guys, I really don't recommend getting the smaller screen. Like always pay the extra couple bucks. You've got a couple different options there. You can get just this basic screen layout. There is the option to get it with factory navigation as well. But one of the nice things is that this thing does support Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we can use Google Maps, we can use Apple Maps, or we can use Waze directly through this middle screen. So that in and of itself is absolutely worth the investment. Now, if for whatever reason you're not on this home screen, all you're gonna do is just press the home button at the very top there, and that's gonna bring you back to this home screen. Now this one specifically does not have the factory navigation. If it did, the button would show up just in between these two. The layout of the screen would also be different. That compass would be gone. This would be moved over there and there would be a little map there as well. So again, whether you get factory navigation is really gonna depend on you. If you're doing a lot of travel between Canada and the US or areas where you might hit roaming, it might make sense to look at the factory navigation. Now, when it comes down to the screen itself, it's very straightforward. Starting off in our audio settings in the very bottom, we've got a couple different things we can do. So looking at sources, we've got AM, FM, Sirius, XM, and then our Bluetooth as well. If we had a USB memory stick with MP3 files on it, we'd have the ability to plug that into a USB port, and then that would show up. If one of my phones was connected, I would also have my phone audio, and if I had any radio apps installed, so things like LiveX Live, Spotify, etc., would all work directly through this middle screen. So very straightforward. We can easily switch between sources. We can tune using this, or we've got the ability to tune using our voice by pressing the button on the steering wheel. We've also got the ability to direct tune. So we can type in a station, we just hit enter, and it's changed it to the station for us. Now, this is the stock sound system. Let's crank it for a second and see how it sounds. Okay, that is not bad at all for a van. Like it, the sound is amazing. It's not a Bang & Olufsen amazing sound, but it, it's gonna work for the majority of people. Now, if you've changed to a station, you wanna save it, all you're gonna do is press and hold, and as you can see there, it saved it. Now, one of the nice things about these presets is that we can have a mix of AM, FM, Sirius, XM, etc., all on the same preset pages. Now, when it comes down to adding a phone, it's a very straightforward process. So just by pressing the phone button there, we've got the ability to add a phone in. We're gonna start off on the iPhone side of things. So what you're gonna do is just make sure that your phone's unlocked and you're just gonna make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on. Okay, and then let's watch on the bottom of the screen there. After we hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, so as you can see there, Ford Transit's shown up and we're just gonna press that button. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, so we just wanna make sure that the pins match up and in this case they do, so we're just gonna hit pair on the phone and yes on the screen. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. All right, so a couple other things to see. As you can see there, it's asking us, do I want to allow contacts and favorites to sync? Yeah, I'm connecting my phone so that my contacts will sync up. So I want to make sure I hit allow there. Now on the screen, we've got a couple of different options. So as you can see there, we've got 911 assist and we've got contact download. So 911 assist, I absolutely recommend turning that one on. And the big reason why is because if the vehicle senses a collision, it's automatically going to die on 911 for you. Automatic contact download. When the phone is connected, if there's a new contact, it'll download it to the vehicle. I do recommend keeping that one turned on. But as you can see, I'm now connected. I've got my calls, contacts, so I can change phones. So useful if you've got multiple phones in the vehicle. You can easily switch between whoever's is coming on Bluetooth. We can go do not disturb, and we can also use Siri. So that's a really, really cool thing. Now, I also had mentioned earlier that you've got the ability to use certain apps directly through this middle screen. So as you can see, we've got LiveX Live, which is essentially, it's like Spotify, it's a radio app, and that's gonna work directly through the middle screen there. So really cool to know that we've got the ability to do that. Now, if we want to set up Apple CarPlay, it's a very straightforward process. Literally all we're going to do, we're going to take a USB cable and we're going to plug it into any of the available ports. Bam, set. And we're just going to take the opposite end of that cable and we're literally just going to plug it into the phone. So one and two, watch this. Oh, 
So Apple CarPlay lets you use your phone in a way that allows you to stay focused on the road. Yes, we have to continue there. If you want to be able to use CarPlay, you also do have to agree to this. Now watch what happens. We are fully connected there. Like, look at how amazing that is. So we're fully connected, but if we see there, so it's also asking me, do I want to allow CarPlay with Sync 3 while my phone is locked? Yeah, I want to make sure that I can use CarPlay when my phone is actually locked. So we're just going to hit allow, and I am now connected. We've got my phone, my music, my messages, and a number of other things. Now, remember what I was telling you, you can use Google Maps or Apple Maps directly through this middle screen. Maybe you'd prefer to use the Waze app instead. So if you don't have factory navigation, guys, don't worry about it. You can use any of these different maps directly through this middle screen. Now, one of the cool things about Apple CarPlay side of things is that we've also got the ability to adjust things and tweak things a little bit. So if we go to general, we can go to CarPlay. We've got my car connected there and we can now customize the screen. So we're on the home screen there, but I don't know, maybe let's say if you prefer to use Google Maps or maybe you prefer to use Waze more so. So all you're going to do is drag it to the top. And as you can see, it's just automatically downloaded it, or it's moved it to the front for us. So we can kind of adjust these things. Like if you're never going to use Zoom or WhatsApp, etc., you can completely remove them from the tray. You can adjust as you'd like to and moving your more popular apps front to back. Now, one of the interesting things is, let's say if you kind of mess up in the order, you can bring it back to a default. All you're going to do is hit reset, reset layout. And that's just going to bring you back to that default layout instead. So we go back home. As you can see, we are now there. Now, one of the interesting things is that we've also got the ability to use the radio while we're also connected to CarPlay. So really, really cool. Now, if you ever need to get back to the home screen, we're just going to hit the Ford button there. And as you can see, we've got my phone. Maps is now there because my phone has a few map applications. So we've got the ability to use that, which is kind of cool. We can jump back into CarPlay there. But what happens if you want to have your phone connected to charge up, but you don't need CarPlay connected? All you're going to do is go to CarPlay Preferences. Or if you're on the home screen there, you just go to Settings. And then you just scroll across until you see Apple CarPlay. We can remove my phone or we can just temporarily disable CarPlay. So really, really cool. So as you can see there, my phone is charging, but it's not connected through CarPlay, but we can still go to nav and things like that, which is kind of cool. I love the fact that we've got that flexibility and that capability. Now, if we ever need to remove a phone from the vehicle, it's also very straightforward. All we're going to go, all we're going to do is go to phone. We're going to go view devices. We've got my phone. We can either disconnect it or we can completely remove it. So it's pretty straightforward. And that's how you work Apple CarPlay inside of the transit. Setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So all we're going to do is on our phone, we're just going to open it up and we're just going to jump into Bluetooth and we're going to make sure that our phone Bluetooth is on. We're going to hit add device. Okay, so same thing. We're going to give that a minute. Perfect. There we go. So as you can see there, Ford Transit has shown up. So all we're going to do is press Ford Transit. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, so literally the exact same thing that we saw on the Apple side of things. So all we want to make sure is that the numbers match up. These ones do. So on the phone, we're going to hit OK. And we're just going to hit yes on the screen. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, here we go. So it's also asking me, do I want to allow access to my messages? Yes. Now this specific phone does not have a SIM card. I just use it for testing purposes. So we're just going to hit allow there. Shouldn't be any active messages though, but we are now connected there. Now, one interesting thing, I did not disconnect the iPhone as of yet. So we've got both phones connected, but we can set one of them as the favorite. So let's say if you have a tendency to use one or the other, you can set it as a favorite there if you'd like to and then you can just hit finish so we are now connected there as well to that phone now setting up android auto is the exact same process as what we saw on the iphone side of things so we're just going to take a usb cable we're going to plug it into any of the available ports boom we're just going to take that opposite end of the cable we're going to plug our phone in and watch what happens oh android auto so all we have to do is unlock to continue so phone is unlocked we're just going to hit continue now, Android Auto would like to turn on Bluetooth and allow my car to access and display notifications. Yep, we're just going to hit next. Watch this. Okay. Now, interesting side of things. Now, this does happen occasionally. I've noticed it just on the Android Auto side of things, not on the CarPlay side. But if you ever get this message where it's saying it's, it can't connect, you're just going to hit cancel and watch this. 
Boom, it's connected us. I have no idea why that happens, but for whatever reason it does. So if you ever run into that issue where it's kind of got you in a weird loop on Android Auto, just hit the cancel button on your phone and it's gonna automatically connect you. Don't know why it is, it's just on the Android side of things as I was mentioning, but exactly what we saw with the Apple CarPlay side of things, we can use Google Maps. If I had Waze installed, we'd be able to use that through this middle screen as well. We've got my phone, we've got some basic settings, notification center, and we can also use Google Assistant, which is kind of neat. Now, very similar to what we saw to the Apple side of things. So on our phone, if we search for Android Auto, we've got the ability to hop into Android Auto and look at a few different things. So we can tweak some notifications, permissions, and change things as a default, and a number of other things. Now, if for whatever reason, let's see if your favorite app is not showing on this middle screen. You wanna make sure that your Android Auto is up to date. You wanna make sure that your system software is up to date. So you've got the latest version running. On top of that, you wanna make sure that the app that you're using is also up to date. Because if everything's not up to date, it won't necessarily work directly through this middle screen. So definitely something to think of there. Just make sure that you always keep your phones up to date. Now, when it comes down to it, if we ever need to get back to that home screen, we just hit the forward sync and same thing. We can use, make a phone call if we've got it. We can look at our maps. We can jump back into Android Auto or from the home screen, we can jump into our preferences. And the same thing is what we saw on the iPhone side of things. We can disable Android Auto, which means that I'm not using Android Auto, but my phone is charging. So that's really cool. Or we can completely remove the phone from, the, uh, from Android Auto. And in order to be able to remove it from the vehicle, we can view devices. We've got my iPhone and then the Galaxy. We can either disconnect, make it a favorite, or we can completely remove it from the vehicle. So that phone is now fully disconnected, but if you look there, we are still charging up. And that is how you add a phone to the vehicle looking at some basic settings so very straightforward starting off with our sound settings we can tweak out our treble mid-range bass speed compensated volume and then our occupancy mode so if all seats are occupied or just the driver clock so we can go to some basic clock settings but we can either go to settings and clock or on the home screen we can just press the clock at the very top and that's going to launch us into this so we can go so as of right now we're obviously on the military time but we can change hours change minutes go between a.m or p.m or we can switch between that 12 hour or the 12 hour or the 24 hour mode instead now if you're traveling west coast east coast etc you can also can reset the clock to the gps time as well so that's one of the cool things you don't manually have to press up and down you just hit reset clock and it's automatically going to change the clock to wherever the vehicle is physically located Next up, we've got Bluetooth. So we can turn Bluetooth off completely. We can add in other devices or we can view the connected Bluetooth devices. So this is one of the areas that we would go if we wanted to enable an MP, a Bluetooth enabled MP3 player. We've got a phone. So we've got my phone fully connected there. If we want to, we can disconnect it or we can remove it. I'm actually gonna reconnect it just for a little bit later on in the video there. So I'm connected again. Next up, we've got radio. So radio, we've got our HD radio, radio text, and our preset pages. Always recommend on the preset pages, give it the maximum, so six pages there, and I'll show you why. So if we look, this is the, oh, they'll love this song. Squirrel. All right, so this is the radio text in the back there. It lets us know what song is playing. But look at this. We updated it to six pages. So now we've got 30 individual presets. So really, really cool if you're a heavy user of Sirius XM and you want to kind of tweak things out as you go. Now, one of the interesting things here, so entertainment sources, my phone is connected so we can listen to my phone audio or we've got LiveX Live there again. So that radio app. If we go to Sirius XM for a second, so I've tweaked the settings. If we go back to our setting, all of a sudden it's Sirius XM. So we can tweak a few things on Sirius now. We can change out, so if we've got a parental lock, we can set that up. We can do a number of other things. So we can lock out certain channels, we can have channels skipped and things like that. So if you've got certain stations that you just don't wanna to listen to, you've got the ability to lock that one out. Moving back to audio again, and let's tweak it back and let's change it back to the FM. As you can see, it's moved us back to the radio instead. Mobile apps, some of them will work through USB, some of them will work over Bluetooth. You've got a choice of which ones will work. There we go. Boom, there we go, okay. So as you can see there, we've got LiveX Live for different app settings. Moving into our general settings now. General settings, we can go between English, Spanish, or French, Celsius, Fahrenheit, kilometers, or miles. The beeping that we're getting here, if that beeping drives you crazy, you can turn it off. Automatic system updates, I always recommend keeping that one turned on. And the big reason why is because the vehicle will, if it senses an update's available, it'll automatically update as well. So you can do a scan for an update if you want to, but I always recommend keeping that one turned on. And when you do, also make sure that you're connected to a Wi-Fi network at home. So Wi-Fi, you would just connect there, or you can connect to a data-only device, your cell phone, whatever the case may be. 
into our general settings again. The other one to point out, so we've got a reset there. So we can either do forward pass reset or a master reset. So with the forward pass app, essentially the vehicle was going to act as a wireless hotspot. So the forward pass app is going to be able to do a couple things for the vehicle. You need it installed in your iPhone or Android device. And if for whatever reason forward pass is giving you issues, you can reset that. If the vehicle screen is giving you issues or if you're selling it, you want to bring it back to factory defaults, you're just going to go master reset. And that's going to be the basics of the general settings. 911 assist, we've already gone over that one. Wi-Fi and automatic updates, same thing. We want to make sure that we've got automatic updates on. And our Wi-Fi, we want to make sure we're connected to a home Wi-Fi network. Or if we're on the go, just connect to a publicly available Wi-Fi network to check for updates. Ford Pass Connect, as I mentioned, the vehicle can be used as a wireless hotspot. You do need to have a data-only plan through your cell phone provider in order to be able to do that. Apple CarPlay, my phone is still connected through CarPlay, so if I remove it, watch what happens. CarPlay is now gone. Now, if I plug my phone back in through USB, that CarPlay setting is going to come up again. Looking at some vehicle settings now. So a few different options. So we've got our basic camera settings and then our serial number. Display mode. So this thing is nice, but for some people, you might find it a little bit too bright. So you can turn the display off if you'd like to. Touch to bring it back to life. Or you can go to a calming screen instead where it's just going to show the time and the date. Same thing, press to bring it back to life again. Moving into our settings and back to the display. Now this is the daytime mode for the vehicle. Now one of the nice things is that you can permanently lock it in the daytime. You can change it to the nighttime as well so that it's always the nighttime mode. So it's really a matter of preference, but I love this blue. So I would personally always have it on the blue there. The auto mode is going to switch between the daytime or the nighttime mode, depending on how bright it is outside. So really a matter of preference. You've got the ability to adjust the brightness if you want to, or you can change the background. Voice control, few different things there. I want you to listen to something for a second. 97.7. Tuning to FM 97.7. Okay, so it's changed radio stations for us, and we got a message letting us know that it was going to do that. With the advanced mode, we won't get as many notifications, so listen to this now. 94.9. Okay, we didn't get the confirmation, but it's changed the station. So if you don't want as many prompts, just make sure advanced mode's turned on. Phone confirmation, do you want to call such and such person, yes or no? And then the voice command list, when we press the voice command button on the steering wheel, this is the command list. So whether or not that one comes on depends, depends on whether or not you have that toggled on or off. Last one is our valet mode. So with valet mode, we've got the ability to enter in a four digit number, which is going to lock out that screen. So I'll show you what that looks like. Enter something difficult like 0000. Now, as you can see there, we're fully locked out. So I can turn the van off, I can turn it back on. This is not going to change until I re-enter that four digit number. Use something challenging, not 0000, but it's kind of nice to know that we've got the capabilities to do that. Well, folks, that was a look at Sync 3, and it's kind of neat, right? Like, lots of flexibility and things like that. Now, as I mentioned, I do recommend getting that larger screen, and the big reason why is because not only do you get the Android Auto Apple CarPlay support, but it's the backup camera as well. So having the flexibility to have that larger screen for the backup camera is an absolutely huge thing. Like, this thing in the extended high roof, it is a beast of a vehicle. So definitely recommend at least the reverse sensing system, but ideally that larger screen. Guys, invest the few extra dollars because trust me, it absolutely is worth it. If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. But until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.